Hello everyone, we are here with David Wilson, who is the Communications Director at Transit and Parking, and we're talking all things Transit and Parking. So David, you want to get us started? Sure. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Uh, you may have questions as we go. Please send those in and we'll try to address those that, that we can. Uh, first, I want to tell you we're, the, we're in the conference room at the Transit and Parking Department. Uh, if you want to know where we're at on campus, we're right across the street from, from um, the uh, basketball arena that uh, is one of the premier basketball arenas in the conference. Mm -hmm. So we're easy to find if you ever need to, but this year things are a little different as you might understand. We wanted to start today by referring to a map of our campus and it shows all the parking areas. Now this is available on uh, our website. If you go to parking.uark.edu, you'll find this quite easily and it's always updated. But basically, uh, if you're a student, you'll have a few choices and you've, many of you have been through this, but you could possibly be one of the fortunate ones who gets a garage permit or you may get to park in the resident reserved and that is indicated by the red shaded areas. Those are usually closest to the residence halls. So uh, some of you, like I said, have been through this drill. Uh, you may be notified even now that, that you're one of those who, who uh, gets a permit in that area. So you'll want to be uh, mindful of that. Uh, some of you, it's much more affordable for the majority of our students to get a green permit. And you can see there are several areas that will um, hold uh, green permits. We don't really, we don't really run out of uh, green permits to sell. Uh, as many of people who need one, we can sell one of those to you. Uh, the most affordable option, it's not for everybody, but some students have found that they like to get into lot 99, which is our orange. It's a commuter permit. It serves a lot of people who may not live on campus, but some students who do live on campus, they may want their car here, um, but they don't want to use it very often. They just want to make sure it's here. So you can park it down here and leave it. Uh, it's a well-lit area. It's served by Razorback Transit. Even if you take your car down here and want to park it, you can hop on a bus and, and get back to the main part of campus. So. Like I said, that's not for everyone, but for some people, they really like that arrangement. So those are some things for you to consider. Um, and like I said, this map is online. You may want to look at it later. Uh, I have some other comments that I want to share with you. I think that we're going to uh, just sit around the table and try to talk informally today. And it looks like we have about 26 people with us right now. Everybody can right. comment and tell us where they're from while we go over these questions. It sounds like the more the merrier. We like to hear from you. We don't want to do all of the talking, so you're welcome to contact us at, at any time. And, and while we're on that topic, forgive me, I'm still getting used to a mask. Um, there's different ways to contact us. And one way that you can call our office is simply 575-PARK, P-A-R-K. Uh, of course, the area code is 479. If you need us for any reason in the office, you can call there. You can also follow us on social media. We are on Twitter and on Facebook and on Instagram, so we hope that you will follow us there. We try to, to put some announcements out there when, when it's needed. Uh, you could email us at parknet at uark.edu. So you may want to uh, jot that down. I'll say it again, P-A-R-K-N-E-T. Dot edu. And in this day and age, in a normal year, we would just say, come on by the office, we'll help you. But everyone understands uh, this year, just like everywhere else, because of some coronavirus concerns, we're doing things a little bit differently. Um, we do have people in our office, but it's a skeleton crew. We do have people at our front counter, but they are set up um, to, to handle you know, specific cases, like if, if you're dealing with ADA parking, or if you need a motorcycle permit, you know, uh, some of those can't be done online, but almost everything else can be done online. And if you need to call us, you can. So we, we hope that you will. Uh, we want to provide the best service we can in, in light of the uh, circumstances that we all face. Great, and it looks like we have Barbara from New York with us today. New York? Yeah. Great. Well, welcome to the University of Arkansas, virtually speaking. Uh, we're glad that you're tuned in. Uh, I will say, and I can, I can make a couple of more comments, I, I think most of our audience is um, incoming students, brand new students, freshmen. You may have a lot of questions and that's okay. Uh, we're here to help you through that. 
I, I could give you a couple of hints as you get started, and, and you can think about this. When you get to campus, if you have a vehicle, there will be times, and we all understand this, there's going to be times when maybe you, you don't have a class and you and some friends are going to go somewhere in town and maybe come back, and maybe you have an afternoon class that you need to get to. You may come back to campus and find out that where you're usually parking, maybe that's full at that moment, and you'll need to hunt for another place. Just be careful that you always park where your permit grants you access. Now we have noticed in the past, sometimes you may be with a friend or a roommate and, and they'll say, it's okay to park there, that's, to go ahead, that's no problem. But except your friend or your roommate, they don't really work for transit and parking. So they may give, give you some information that is inaccurate and then you end up with a citation. We, we don't want you to have a citation, uh, but sometimes that happens. So just be careful, be mindful about where you should be with your vehicle and, and you can avoid that, that so issue. If my friend says, that he, they told me I could park here, that's not a, uh, we can't bring that to you and say that, that, that usually, we get out of our we, ticket? We hear that a lot, uh -huh. but uh, we really operate on the basis that, and you know, everybody here, no matter if they're 18 years old or older, that, that is an adult and we try to let everybody handle things as an adult and we kind of expect everybody to know where, where their permit allows them to be. Uh, so we do get that excuse. Somebody told me that I could park here uh, and that really doesn't work because sometimes the somebody who's providing the info, they may not be steering you correctly in that regard. Um, also, I wanna say this, um, when you're on campus, uh, if you're living in a residence hall, this is a big campus, and you may have a class that's all the way on the other side of campus. Now, if you're new, and forgive me, I'm still struggling with the mask, but if you are new on campus, you may be tempted to hop in your car and, and, and think, oh, well, I can park in another lot on the other side of campus and I'll get closer to my, my class, and that doesn't always work. It's better just to, to, to walk across campus or you could hop on a bus, one of the Razorback Transit buses, they stop at various places on campus. The only reason we don't recommend you driving to class is because when the commuters are coming here uh, and we're up and running, it's almost like a small city. And uh, you, you will sometimes end up late for class because you're spending more time looking for a parking space somewhere else. So uh, if you have a good spot where your vehicle is parked and it's time to go to class, it's best just to walk to class and and get there and, and not worry about making your life more complicated. Sophie, you were a student here for many years. Did you ever drive around looking for parking? I did. I actually never had a parking pass, so I would either always have to pay in Harmon or Garland. So I tried to rely on my friends for rides, or I really worked my calf muscles by walking. A lot of students end up doing that. And it, like I said, it is a big campus, but it wor it'll work out if you, d you just need some time to get used to it. Let me say this, you don't want to do like my daughter did. She graduated here more than a year ago. And um, she handled her own parking situation, even though her dad worked right here. She took care of her business. But when she approached her senior year, uh, she had many, she was doing student teaching. She didn't have to be on campus very much. I think she had one evening class and she was telling me when the year started, she didn't think she needed a parking permit. And I told her, if you're gonna be on campus, I think you will need one. And I still laugh about this, but she looked at me and she said, I think I can get away with it. And I, <laughs> I said, listen, hon, you, you know where your dad works, you're not gonna get away with anything. And uh, of course my point is, she did need to get the parking permit mm -hmm. and, and you will too, if you're gonna be on campus. So she didn't get away with it? She didn't get it, no. But I, I helped her buy the permit, just like a good dad would. <laughs> and by the way, some people don't realize this, but even those of us who work within transit and parking, we have to have our own parking permit as well. And I think that's perfectly appropriate. Uh, university employees all have to have a parking permit, no matter you know what part of the university that they, they work for. Uh, and I think that's good because uh, across the board, everybody is having to abide by the guidelines that the university has in place. Gotcha. We actually have two questions from people. Tim asks, will my daughter always have a spot in the Garland garage or do they oversell that location? They don't oversell what they do. They will sell so that everything is full. Uh, now nobody's guaranteed the same space in a garage every time, but I would think it would be rare that you just couldn't find a space if you have the permit. 
Now the only exception might be is if several people parked in there illegally. We have had that happen. And uh, when that happens, a lot of people are good to contact us and say, you know, it doesn't look like they have the right permit to be in here. And so some of our enforcement comes from other people telling us that somebody's either in my spot or in, in a place where it keeps me from parking. Gotcha. I don't think I've ever had trouble finding a spot in Garland. Um, and then Taylor asks, I'm supposed to move in on Friday and I still haven't received my parking permit in the mail. What do I do? Well, the good news is our parking enforcement, they're not trying to write citations when you move in. So even if you didn't have the permit, you know, that's not a day when you're likely to get a citation unless you did something really foolish. And the only reason I say that is some people have done that in the past. On move-in days, we've had some people try to park on the sidewalk or park on the grass or you just do something that, you know, most of us understand you shouldn't do that. And in those kind of cases, uh, someone will deal with it. Um, but, uh, you know, on move-in day, you shouldn't worry. It's just also to be understood that according to the directions that you've received about move-in, you know, you have a window of time. You need to get in and get out and then move to one of the areas that's set aside for you. But if the green permit is not in your possession at that time, uh, you don't need to sweat it. Just, you know, like I said, be responsible where you are with the vehicle. Gotcha. And we do recommend that after you uh, unload your car and have that 45 minutes in the lot for move-in, that you go over to lot 56 if you're a student, which is on the south end of campus. Did we point it out on the map, lot 56? I can point that out now if you want. Yeah, uh, let's point out that. You can see the heart of campus is right here, and when you look at it online, you can see that much more clearly. But lot 56 is in this area. It's very large. Um, it's, it's going to accommodate, you know, anybody that needs to be there on move-in day. So um, you'll want to, uh, to be aware of that. It will get crowded on move-in day. Sometimes it could be a little frustrating, but usually when everybody's patient, uh, we get to do everything that we need to do. And like I said, um, the people who write citations, are that's not their goal on that day. They're not trying to get a citation written to you. They're trying to make sure everybody gets to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit different look. Uh, so wanted you to be aware of that. Great. Um, Tracy asks, will a student with resident reserved always be assured of a parking space? For example, at a Dohi in lot 77. Yes. The short answer is yes, but it's like I answered just a moment ago when it comes to garages. We do have instances where somebody who, who may have a green permit, uh, they'll try to park in a resident reserve. Now they, they get a citation because they should get a citation, but in the meantime, if a few people pull in there illegally and then you come in with your permit, um, it's, um, you know, your spot may not be there, but it's not because we don't have one for you, it's because someone else is trying to take it, so, so we'll deal with that. I can say that um, I have parking on campus too, and I'm in an area that's smaller, and if it's not, if I can't find a space there, we can always um, tell parking and transit and they'll come in and, you know, check and make sure that the people are there legally parked. And if they're not, then they'll be cited. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a complaint driven mm -hmm. to some degree. And where is the best place to let someone know that they think, you know, I would call the, the 575-PARK. And uh, of course, that's during regular office hours. Mm -hmm. In the evening, it's a little harder to get in touch with us or send an email, but we still have enforcement, you know, throughout, you know, around the clock. Uh, obviously, we don't have as many enforcement personnel out and about on campus in the middle of the night, but we do have enforcement even after hours. Gotcha. And we can maybe wait for people to submit any other questions, but did you have anything else you want to go over? Well, we always say that, you know, we're, we're kind of the... Uh, the department on campus that a lot of people get upset with and we understand that because if you think about it let's say if you get a parking citation and maybe it's fifty dollars but still fifty dollars is fifty dollars we understand that even if you know you deserve the citation you're still not going to like it I mean nobody likes getting any kind of ticket I mean who does and so we understand that it's frustrating um, so with that in mind, we don't go around campus. Some people say we have a quota, which we don't. Uh, there are some people that say that 
transit and parking, you know, the, the people that write the citations make more money if they write more citations, and that's not correct either. Um, our, our purpose as a department and our goal as a department is to try to get everybody on campus to where they need to be. And that's why Razorback Transit is a part of our, our operation too. A lot of times, generally speaking, the people like the buses on campus, but they're not crazy about the parking, but it's just because um, there's so many thousands of people who need to come here at the same time. Um, if anybody is wondering how many spaces we have, a lot of people say we don't have enough parking, but if you add up, if you add up all of the spaces on campus, all of the parking lots, all of the garages, um, all the resident reserves, if you add all of that up, it's uh, more than 14,000 spaces. And when we do audits of our parking areas, we find that during the busiest times, there are 10,000 or 11,000 vehicles on campus. So when people say we don't have enough parking here, what they really mean is there's not enough parking right by the front door of where they want to go. There's always enough parking, it's just it's not always con uh, possible for it to be convenient for everybody. Okay, um, and then we have a few more questions. So Clay asks, can we pay and receive permits in person during Friday move-in? You could, but we're not really everything right now because of coronavirus concerns. It's set up so that your parking permit will come to you in the mail. Uh, you can order that online and they will mail it to you. Uh, the, only, the only time you would need to come in our office right now is like I mentioned earlier, if you had you know, ADA parking concerns or if you had uh, needed to get a permit for a motorcycle. Um, the only other exception would be is if you talk to someone in our office and they said, yeah, we got your permit here, you can come by and pick it up. If someone specifically tells you that, then you could come by and take care of it. But other than that, like I said earlier, we're ha we have kind of a skeleton crew right now. And um, that is also because of coronavirus concerns. So we, uh, we're not set up to take care of everybody that walks in the door. We'll take care of those issues that, are, that have to be done in person. Okay. Um, and Diego says, I have applied for parking and no response. I, I would call back the 575 PARK. Uh, you could also send an email to to remind us at parknet at uart.edu. I would do that. Uh, actually, if I was talking to Diego one-on-one, -on -one, I would say, let me get your contact information. I'll make sure somebody gets to you, but we can't hardly do that right here. <laughs> but we, uh, at any rate, please try again. Reach out to us again, and then we'll go from there. All right, thank you. And Becky asks, I understand there's no backing in in and to stay off the lines well at this point well you need to stay off the lines no matter when you park uh, because uh, we, we try not to be picky about that except if it prevents someone from parking in the next space that's a problem so you do need to be mindful of the lines um, the uh, parking areas right now wherever you park you can back in a space or you can pull through to the next space except if you're in a garage where it's angled parking. We don't allow backing into angled parking because that creates kind of a problem. Um, but right now you can pull through. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and Anthony asks, when will resident reserve open for parking during or after move-in? It should be good to go before the first day of class. We usually make an announcement about that. I believe last year we, we uh, designated that that way uh, the weekend before classes started. And um, yeah, housing, housing will take custody, will, will take over some of the resident reserve parking during the move-in time, which starts really, I think Wednesday, and will go through Saturday and possibly Monday. But then we're out of those lots and they are turned over to the students to use as they need to. Mm -hmm. As soon as we're done, they go right back to the students. And that is a good question because it, throughout the summer, in an ordinary summer, we have a lot of people working here and taking summer coursework. Now, this summer's been different, obviously, uh, but 
in a typical summer, we have a lot of different people who are legally um, allowed to park in the red resident reserved areas. And we usually have a cutoff date where we tell everybody, you know, you can't park there anymore unless you have the new resident reserve permit for the coming school year. So when we reach that date, uh, you know, we make sure everyone knows, um, you know, that that's, that's what that's for. That's only for the students with the appropriate permit. Gotcha, thank you. Uh, Anthony also asks, can students park in the new art annex lot and do they need a special permit? I'm not sure what they mean by the arts annex lot, um, but if, if they give me a lot of there's a, there's a building in the south, uh, southwestern part that is, I guess, the art annex. And so maybe that specific lot is what they're talking about. I would say refer to the map, right? Yes. That's and probably. There's also, when you go to our parking website, uh, there is a, we have a parking options chart. If you click on parking and um, there, there's two or three links that come up. And we have a chart that gives a breakdown. Whatever permit you have, it'll tell you where it will allow you to park besides your regular place. And it, it's basically a park down system. If you have uh, a, like a green permit, it also allows you to park in the orange commuter lot that I referred to earlier. Um, so a lot of students will take advantage of that. Um, you just need to be careful and, and read what it says on our website. I'm sorry I couldn't speak specifically to that lot because I, I'm not sure what we're talking about just yet. And Diane, I believe this is our final question from Diane. She said, my daughter was granted a parking pass in Garland. We leave tomorrow. Do we come pick it up? I wouldn't unless somebody in the office told you it was here and available because it may very well be in the mail even as we speak. And you could always call our office to, to double check. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, I believe that's it for our audience questions. Do we have any closing remarks? Well, I would say come and talk to us or contact us to talk to us if you have any issues uh, because we don't want uh, the students or faculty or any employees, we don't want anybody to, to guess about where they need to park if they're not sure. And like I said, uh, no matter what you might hear, our, our number one goal is not to hammer you with a citation, we want you to just have a, 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 a less complicated experience getting from point A to point B, and that's why we're here. Uh, I also like to tell students, you know, that w w we're a part of this university. We support the university's educational mission, and uh, one of we, we've had a slogan put up on, on signs before at different places, and we sometimes say, we're not just helping you get to class, we're helping you get to graduation because that's what we want. Uh, we're not about just parking lots and citations and buses. We're about, we want students to be successful. So when you get that degree in hand, you're really, you're, you're better prepared to be successful in whatever else you might wanna do. So, so we're here to help with that. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, thank you so much for giving us all this great info about transit and parking. Uh, Give us a wave and as we close out. Great seeing all of you, or great for all of you to see me at this point. Maybe sometime we can uh, talk in person. Maybe someday we'll do it without masks, we can hope. Uh, but at any rate, we want you to have a great school year. We appreciate you choosing the University of Arkansas. All right. Thank you, David. Bye. Thank you.